What's up with it, everybody? It's your boy Mookie Jones for Radar Sports and Base Man coming to y'all for another little video, another little topic. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell for notification. We got a great episode for y'all today. Make sure you stay tuned. So, as y'all know, man, the Los Angeles Lakers, man, season look like it's about to come to an end because, you know, Anthony Davis is out. The Lakers right now are in 13 seed. Um, they don't have a great depth. They don't have a great team whatsoever. Um, and we seen it on Christmas. Uh, they got walked down by the Dallas Mavericks. Um, despite LeBron James scoring 38 points, that did not impact the team whatsoever in wins. And, um, you know, once again, the Lakers lose, right? And Anthony Davis was supposed to be out for two to three months. Um, the Lakers fans basically just very frustrated because this is another season where, you know, they had high expectations to go to the playoffs and get further, and they haven't, you know, reached their potential, right? Um, but... You know, the ongoing debate every time, you know, the Lakers somehow underachieve in the season or then reach their potential is who is to blame, right? Who is to blame on why the Lakers are bad this season? And who is to blame why the Lakers are even in this predicament, right? And y'all know me. I have my, you know, comments about this situation. But former NBA coach Jeff Van Gunny came out there and blamed LeBron James on why the Los Angeles Lakers are in this predicament. His quote goes on to say, the numbers are going to be there, but when you get to that level, it's all about how much can you drive winning? The Lakers have not been good the last couple of years. It may not be his fault, but it's his responsibility. That's how you're judged. You set a credible standard. He's still playing individually well, more so on offense than on defense, but they're just not a good team. He's part of that. He had a large part on who's on the roster. It's a hard position. He also goes on to sit there and say, Rob Linka wanted to and planned to trade Buddy Hill, but LeBron James and Anthony Davis encouraged him to go after Russell Westbrook, right? I 100% agree with Jeff Van Gunny, man. And this is why I've been trying to say to these LeBron fanboys, which they keep on sitting there saying that I'm a hater, but this is facts. Since the Los Angeles Lakers made that move to get Russell Westbrook to remove all the wing depth that they had with guys like Kyle Kuzma, KCP, right? Uh, Caruso, they let Caruso walk, right? To go get Russell Westbrook. Ever since them making that move, the Lakers have been straight in turmoil, right? Because when they got Russell Westbrook, they thought they was getting all-star Russ. Russ that gets you, what, 20 and 15, 20 and 10, right? And at the end of the day, Russell Westbrook did not perform to his standard last year for the Los Angeles Lakers. And the Lakers with all that depth, right, with four or five top 75 players, right, where you got three star caliber players on the team to miss the play-in tournament, Everybody's going to point fingers, right? Everybody know that Russell Westbrook was not a great fit for the team. He just wasn't, right? But LeBron James still went after Russell Westbrook. He encouraged Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka to cancel that Buddy Hill trade, to not even go after and go look at DeMar DeRozan. They wanted Russell Westbrook, Right? And the Lakers since then have been a complete disaster. Because not only did they trade that wing depth to go get Russell Westbrook, but he had to do that by trading multiple first round picks and second round picks to get him. Right? So LeBron James get blamed off of that. Because at the end of the day, the last, the Los Angeles Lakers was the preseason favorite last year of winning it all. And they missed the play-in tournament. And I don't want to sit there and tell oh, the Lakers roster was injured. They was injured. But LeBron James had a chance to save the Lakers season. And he missed them a couple of games, which eventually had him missing the play-in tournament. LeBron James may score 30 points, but his leadership last year was horrible. His defense was horrible, right? And he was just out there just jacking up shots, trying to chase a scoring record, not doing anything to impact the team and wins, right? 
If you look at LeBron James' tenure with the Los Angeles Lakers, outside the bu- outside the NBA bubble, LeBron James has been a complete failure. He missed the playoffs three times, right? And at the end of the day, since LeBron James has been with the Los Angeles Lakers, there have been there have been thirty players been traded since LeBron James been with the Los Angeles Lakers, alongside with multiple second round picks. Even when the Los Angeles Lakers won in the NBA bubble, right, that following season, they blew up their roster. And this that was probably the most complete roster that the Los Angeles Lakers had since LeBron James been there, right? And they let guys like Devel McGee walk. They let guys like uh um, Dwight Howard walk, guys that had big impact of them winning a championship in the NBA bubble, right? And LeBron James wanted Montrez Hero, right? Um, Sixth man of the year that year. Um, he was signed by Clutch, right? And Montrez Hero took a pay cut to go play with the Los Angeles Lakers, right? And the man barely even got any minutes um, that following season. So LeBron James has influence on who's going to be on the roster because the front office listens to LeBron James, right? They, 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 you know. Um, Listen to their star players and, you know, what decision to be made. I mean, they get the final say-so, but their star players got influence. So, y'all got to stop acting like this man LeBron James don't know who's going to be on the roster, who's going to get signed, and who's going to be traded, and who's the Lakers looking forward to. But at the end of the day, um, that move for Russ was just bad. It was bad. Um, And since that had been happening, the Lakers um, been missing the playoffs. They didn't even make the play-in tournament. The biggest thing about the Los Angeles Lakers um, that they were missing, I mean, they could put the ball in the basket, but the thing is, defensively last year uh, was horrible. It was this is the none, right? And if you had guys like KCP and Kuzma on the team, I felt like the Lakers would still be a great defensive team. But now you're getting them off last year. The reason why they made the playoffs is because their defense was horrible. So, yes, LeBron James uh, – He's the reason why the Lakers are in this predicament. Jeannie Buss, Rob Palenka, they've been horrible um, running this organization too as well. I got to give them some blame too as well. They have been doing a great job and putting a, a roster that can compete for championships, right? So they get blamed too as well. But at the end of the day, when is LeBron James is going to take some accountability, right? The year that LeBron James, you know, first came to the Los Angeles Lakers, right? Um, you know, they had great young talent, right? Um, LeBron got hurt. I think the Lakers were like a top five seed, and uh, he missed some games, but he came back and he activated playoff mode, activated, and proceeded to lose the next 13 games, right? That eventually got him out of the playoffs, right? But according to these Bron fans, they'll sit there and say, oh, LeBron James didn't have no help. LeBron James was injured. He was healthy on the second part, part of the season that year, um, um, uh, the 18 and 19 year, right? His first year with the Los Angeles Lakers. And they proceeded to lose the last 13 games, right? But LeBron James don't get no blame, though. He don't get no blame, right? The year that the Lakers got put out the first round against the Phoenix Suns, LeBron James said a storm was coming. (laughs) He said a storm was coming, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, it was just a little, a little, a little sprinkle, right? (laughs) And then when Anthony Davis went out, LeBron James got outplayed by Devin Booker, not getting back on defense, quitting on the team in the first round against the Phoenix Suns. And the Suns wiped the floor with him and put him out the first round. Then, last year, (laughs) LeBron James sat there and said, keep the same energy, the narratives, keep talking about my squad, our ages, and all of that. Keep that same narrative, please. Please. After that tweet, the Los Angeles Lakers Went on a losing streak. And they missed the playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen. 
Then LeBron James, the middle of the season, right, after All-Star break, sat there and apologized, saying that, Laker Nation, I promise we'll get better. I promise we'll turn our season around. And they lost what the last, they, they went after that tweet, they went 6 of 20. They won six games, lost 20 games after that tweet that LeBron James put out there. Then LeBron James, right, in April, when the playoffs was going in, he sat there and said, I will not miss the playoffs again. He tweeted out there. Since that tweet, this season, the Lakers are in the 13th seed, and LeBron James just recently deleted that tweet. Of him sitting there saying he would not miss the playoffs again in his career. Because he knows it's over. The Lakers are bad. LeBron James can get his 30, 35, 38 points. But that's not going to impact the team in wins whatsoever. Right? And at the end of the day, when we look at on why this happened, or why the Lakers are in this predicament, we're going to look at LeBron James. And we're going to look at the front office as well. Because they get blamed as well. But if LeBron James ain't made that trade, the Lakers won't even be in this position. Right? That's all I got for y'all today. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. It's your boy Mookie Jones. I'm out.